It's the morning of April 7, 2008. At the Lebanon Municipal Airport in Lebanon, Tennessee, two pilots, the owner-builder of a Vans RV-10 and his friend, are preparing for a long cross-country flight to the Sun and Fun Air Show in Lakeland, Florida. Weather conditions at the departure airport are VFR, but en route, it's a different story. A stationary front is parked over southern Georgia and eastern Alabama, directly along the intended route of flight. Ceilings over the area are overcast at roughly 1,000 AGL, with tops around 4,500 MSL. It's unclear how much the pilots know about the weather ahead, but they do file an IFR flight plan. The RV-10's owner is not instrument rated, but his friend, the pilot for the flight, is. He's logged over 300 hours in actual IMC, most of it in a Cessna Cardinal. This, however, will be his first flight in the RV-10. It's 10.30 a.m. when the flight gets underway, and everything proceeds normally for the first hour and 15 minutes. At 11.48, while level at 9,300 feet, the pilot contacts Atlanta Approach Control and requests a VOR approach to Eufaula, Alabama, roughly 80 miles south. The controller grants the request, first clearing the aircraft to descend to 4,000 MSL, then clearing it for the approach. Shortly thereafter, though, things start to go wrong. GPS data recovered later show the aircraft's heading, altitude, and airspeed becoming erratic. And soon, the pilot requests an approach to a different airport, Auburn, Alabama. On the way there, however, he changes his mind again, this time requesting vectors for an ILS approach to Columbus, Georgia. But things are not going well in the cockpit. The pilot is having trouble controlling the aircraft. On several occasions, deviating 400 feet above and 1,200 feet below his assigned altitude. After he flies straight through the localizer course, the controller cancels his approach clearance, at which point the pilot asks for airports with ceilings greater than 2,000 feet. But time has run out. Over the next 32 seconds, the aircraft dives from 2,700 to 1,300 feet, then zooms back up to 2,800 feet, at which point its ground speed is only 34 miles per hour. The GPS recording ends 10 seconds later. Of all the puzzling questions about this accident, one stands out. How is it that a relatively proficient, experienced instrument pilot could have so much trouble controlling an aircraft in benign IMC? The answer to that question ultimately lies in the pilot's lack of experience in the aircraft. Unlike his Cessna Cardinal, the RV-10 had a so-called glass panel with no analog backups. Airspeed and altitude were presented on tape displays rather than the dials he was accustomed to. Such differences may sound minor, but in reality, they can require significant adjustment. Experienced pilots interpret instruments automatically. They don't have to think about it. But glancing at an airspeed indicator and knowing your rough speed from the position of the needle is a very different thing than reading an instantaneously updated, constantly changing number on a vertical tape it requires a very different kind of instrument scan. Take those differences, add an unfamiliar aircraft that's significantly faster and aerodynamically slicker than what you're used to, and then add weather, and you have a recipe for just this kind of accident. Transitioning from standard to glass avionics, or vice versa, is more complicated than many pilots realize. Different instrument presentations require adjustment and training, even for experienced pilots. In short, you have to do your homework, especially if you're flying IFR. Shrug it off, and the punishment could be a lot worse than a slap on the wrist.